Hi, welcome to another one of our toolkit videos. Remember, our academic toolkit videos are to help you work smarter rather than harder. And today's video may be a little long, but I highly encourage you to watch it because it is life changing. All right, that might be a little bit of an overstatement, but it is definitely a game changer in your academic approaches. Uh, through writing and even your professional approaches in writing. If you have not heard of these things that I'm going to be talking about in just a few minutes, you definitely want to add them to your own personal toolkit. They will make your life so much easier and they will improve, guaranteed, they will improve the quality of your work. All right, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about reference management software. Now, I have talked to many, many students, and it seems that most of you are not aware of reference management software. So today, I'm really to the purpose of this video is to make you aware of the software, the power of it, which is fantastic. Any modern academic writer is using this. So you definitely want to know about these. If you choose not to use them, totally up to you. My guess is you are probably going to adopt them pretty quickly. Now, the purpose of this video is not a how-to. It is really a demonstration of the power of these things. And then you can go out and do your own due diligence about which application you want to play with, check out, purchase, not purchase. And then once you go from there, um, there are numerous, numerous uh, how-to videos out on the web. Uh, YouTube, I've seen probably 20 or 30 of them personally. I mean, there are so many good ones out there. So I really didn't think I was going to reproduce um, uh, how-to videos when they're already out there. And there are uh, multiple types of this software, so I'm not sure which one that you'll end up choosing. Everybody has their own preferences. Uh, I'm going to show you the one that I have chosen to use for my academic writing. All of them share these uh, basic similarities in there, and that's what you really, uh, all the big ones share these basic similarities out there. All right, so what does reference management software do? It tracks, it searches, it controls all of your reference materials. So imagine you're at the library, and when I say at the library, I'm not saying the physical library, okay? Very few people go to the physical library anymore to do research. Okay, so you're at the library, and you're finding these peer-reviewed sources and you are using them in your paper, as we all do, right? You are able to download those sources into the document, searching those sources, which is very critical, I think, in my opinion. Some of the software doesn't search the sources. Some of it does. Uh, I think the searching is absolutely the most one of the most powerful features in there. Then as you are writing, so you find this, this wonderful paper, you know, maybe you find five of them, right? Because your, your, your instructor has required you to have five or seven or 10 or whatever number of scholarly um, citations, scholarly sources. So you find your five scholarly sources. You are able to organize those within the software. You're able to search them in many cases within the software. Find that information that you read two days ago rather than having to reread the whole article, which could be 20, 30 or more pages. That's very powerful. And then being able to within, usually I'll speak to this Microsoft Word, drop the citation automatically with a click of a button. Drop that citation in there. Uh, in the area, you know, you've written a sentence that has information that you've, you're pulling from that, uh, that article, that work, and you're able to basically hit a button, it drops a citation in there for you. Then at the end of the paper, they call it write and cite, you've been writing, you've been citing, you've been hitting that button, you know, as you've been going. Then at the end, you hit another single button and your reference page is automatically produced for you pretty error-free. Now, of course, you're dealing with software. You always want to check it. 
um, but I find that it is pretty spot on in most cases. Sometimes it needs a little bit of adjustment, but it saves hours and hours of time. So, are you intrigued? If you haven't already uh, seen these, uh, these features before or not using them, again, do please watch this video. Uh, it will be long. Um, again, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how I use it. Um, you're going to adopt that to your own use, but I think it really, really is a game changer. All right, so sit back, relax, watch this video uh, as we go through some of the basics for reference management software. Okay, this topic is pretty big, but I'm going to try to make it uh, as simplified as possible as we really introduce um, reference management software. Here is a, again, there's a lot of stuff on the web. You can go out and do your own searching. Here's one that I found relatively quickly that uh, in my opinion, covers the basic, introduces the basic reference management software that's out there. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll provide that link to you. Uh, so please look for that. But what we're looking at here, I'm going to give you the names. Okay. So we've got RefWorks, Zotero, EndNote, Mendeley, and Site You Like. Now, I would highly recommend when you look at your search and figuring out which one that you want to pick. RefWorks is great. Zotero is great. EndNote. They're all, all these four are great. I am not familiar with site you like. Um, and I think that's somewhat of a, a new player to that. And it's, it appears to be uh, browser based. With these, I call them the big four up here. The big four. They come in different versions. Um, some are free. Some cost money. Uh, up to you. Almost all of them have a free trial. Um, some of them can have uh, free versions that limit the amount of data they can store. So I would really, you know, grid it out and think what your, uh, which one that you want to choose. Uh, for me, I've tried all four of those and I, would play with it for, you know, I'd write a paper using RefWorks, I'd write a paper using Zotero, and then I'd say, all right, this is the one I really like. Here are the features that really, really speak uh, to me. Now, the features that speak to me may not be the features that speak to you, but I'm going to give you my opinion on some of the key features. One, integration with Word. It has to have integration with Word, in my opinion, for it to have power. And I'll show you what uh, what that looks like. Two, I have to be able to search my references. So once I find them, being able to search them, and that could be a PDF, you know, that is searching a PDF for me for a phrase and a chunk of information that I read a week ago that I don't want to try to figure out where I read that piece of information. I got to be able to, per, uh, to perform a pretty good search uh, on that on that information for me as I'm sitting to get getting ready to write my paper. I think all of us are different in writing our papers. I tend to write something. I, I tend to read all of this uh, information, read all of my references, and then sit down to kind of write it. Uh, you know, I'm taking notes along. But as I'm, I'm saying something in my paper, I'm going, how do I know what I just said was true? And I'm like, well, I read it. I read it in one of these citations about one of these studies. Then I have to go back and find where that study was to cite that information. So I, maybe I work a little bit backwards, but the power to search that, um, you know, that accumulation of, of, of references is, is powerful. Back in the day, you know, we would physically go to libraries, copy all of this stuff, highlight it in yellow. You'd have pages and pages, reams that you'd be flipping through trying to find, you know, where you got that piece of information from. So I think um, the, the ability to search your databases. Again, word integration, I think, is critical. Two, or if you're using pages, totally up to you. That's your business. But word integration is critical. The ability to search the references once collected, I think, is very, very powerful. The, um, the ability to uh, produce a bibli bibliography or reference page with a click is very uh, powerful. And then with the word integration, the, the ability to drop a citation in uh, anytime I want uh, is 
again, a, a absolute for me. And then price. I, you know, you know, what kind of features do you need? What type of writing that you do? I, I'm, you know, obviously looking for something that's a value minded, um, or a, uh, you know, a lower, a, a lower price. All right. So RefWorks is again, all of these four are good. Zotero is free. Uh, EndNote again can have some cost to it. I do think they have some freer versions out there and Mendeley, uh, is free as well. For whatever reasons, I gravitated towards Mendeley, um, and it has worked very, very good for me. So I'm going to be using Mendeley throughout this presentation. Doesn't mean that you have to do that. Pick whatever you want. I have colleagues who will, will go to the end of the earth for EndNote. <laughs> that is their thing is EndNote. And then there's other individuals and other schools that even like, you know, RefWorks is their thing. Um, you know, again, some of them have a little bit more shortcomings, uh, for my personal list, Zotero or, um, Zotero actually was a little bit, not as user friendly, but free, um, for, but for me, Mendeley being free and had the features that I wanted. Okay. So take a look at this article, play with these, pick, you know, a couple of them, you know, the free versions, the trial versions, whatever, write a paper with them and see which one you like. Okay. All right, that's my recommendation on that. Okay, so check out the article below. Again, do your own research. So how does this process work? Well, first, you're at the library, okay? And we're gonna use a sample paper here and, and we're gonna drop some references and citations in there. I'm gonna show you how I, uh, you know, kind of organize uh, my stuff. But you're at the library and you're doing a paper. Let's say I'm doing a paper on something called balanced scorecards, a little interest of mine. All right, so I'm looking up balanced, uh, bal well, there it is, boom, balanced scorecard. Okay, so I'm going to do a search. I'm at the Mercy College Library. Here we go. Um, and see what we've got here. Okay, so let's say I'm, I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, I, I check out this article. Okay, it looks great. You know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I go to the PDF full text version. I read it, man, this has got great stuff. I need this for my paper. Okay. So what, what do I do at this point? This is the thing I want for my paper. There's a couple ways to approach it. I like, uh, this particular method works pretty well. You're going to have to find to notice that it, it'll never be perfect. Um, or it's, it's usually perfect, but sometimes there's little subtle nuances that you'll have to find. So again, I'm using Mendeley, uh, as I said before, I'm going to use that for this demonstration. Another, another important feature, not a, a nice to have, but not need to have was web, uh, web browser integration. So if you've noticed, I, I mentioned integration twice. Okay. Now first was integration with your word processor. If you don't have that, it's worthless. Quite frankly, <laughs> you got to have integration with your word processor, your, whatever you're using you know, pages or word. The uh, other nice to have, not need to have is web browser integration. So Mendeley is also right up here in Chrome for me. I use this um, frequently uh, and you'll see how to import my stuff. Okay. I'm at a library. I can be at almost any library. This is the cool thing too. I'm using the Mercy College library. I go to another school for my doctoral studies. You know, they got their own library. But this can be used with almost any source that you find, including web-based sources that are outside of library resources. So you want to look at those features as well. Does that capture that information? Um, depending, and I'll just talk briefly about this. There are, and you have to talk to your instructor. Okay. There is what I call, um, there's peer reviewed. Okay. This article clearly looks peer reviewed to me. Um, yeah, so let's just say you have your standard peer-reviewed article. Great. There's also some gray material out there, sort of straddling the world between, you know, casual literature and peer-reviewed, you know, that gray literature area too. So, you know, depending on your, uh, you know, I've had some instructors who said, you know, some gray literature is okay, but you definitely want to have a, your, the bulk of your, of your citations is coming from, you know, these, 
well vetted, uh, you know, peer reviewed sources. So that's just in general. Okay. But let's say if I'm more out in some gray literature area and it's on a website, uh, you know, maybe a very reputable website. Again, the integration with the web browser can help me capture that information and pull it into uh, what you'll see here uh, into the software. So that's another nice feature to look at. All right, but let's we're, we'll just go with the basics here. So I found this. I'm at the library. I found this thing. I like it. This is what I want. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and there's a couple methods that I've played with in getting it into um, into the software. I'm going to do this method. This is my favorite method. I'm going to download it. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to download it. I'm going to save. And you know it's on uh, it, it, great. Now I've saved it. It's sitting on my desktop right now, so which you can't see because it's covered all up here. So I've found it. I've saved it to my desktop. Let me um, let me pull this up here so we can see it. All right, move some windows around a little bit. Um, all right, so here's here's this the the PDF I've just downloaded. Here's the article. So you guys can see that here, kind of bringing it into the window. All right, let's close that out. So I'm going to just, so you guys can actually see it. It's just physically a PDF sitting on my desktop. Many PDFs have within them, okay, the embedded citation information already. It's kind of hidden in the, in the code of the PDF, which is really cool. And also the software is able to if it can't find it within there, it's able to do its best guess on what that correct citation information is. So, and usually it's pretty, pretty darn good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to scoot this off here, but trust me, it's still on my desktop. It's just, you guys can't see it too much. And I am going to bring up Mendeley. So I've gone to Mendeley. I've downloaded the application. This is the one that's free. Okay. I've downloaded Mendeley. Here's what the chassis of the basic uh, dashboard, if you will, of what this thing looks like. And sorry, mine's a little crazy and crowded. All right. But this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's got a sync button on here. This will sync uh, another feature. Again, ni nice to have, not need to have, is the ability to sync across multiple devices. Uh, if you are doing, maybe you're doing a little bit of uh, work uh, at work on your work device and then you go home and you, you know, you pick up on your home device. With this particular product, it syncs across all devices. Um, you know, my, my account, if you will, this Mendeley desktop is not this information. Once I have dragged and dropped a document into here, it goes up to the cloud. Um, and it's, it's housed up there. So that's, that's pretty cool that I don't have to worry about things that are on a particular laptop or a device. So you have uh, another nice to have feature. Remember I showed you that web browser integration that happens between this desktop. This is kind of the desktop version of the software and then the web browser integrated part. Um, I do find that I have to sync quite frequently and hit that button and can take, you know, a minute or two for something I've grabbed off of the web through that web integration, browser integration. Um, so I find if I'm just like not really too worried about it right now, I will just work within the, the bigger application, the desktop application that I've downloaded on my laptop and just deal with that and um, only occasionally use the web browser integration. Okay, hopefully I haven't confused you a ton, but um, for this particular app, I have to constantly sync and it's kind of a little bit of a pain, but ultimately it does help me if I need to use that web browser integration. All right. So this is what it looks like. I've got a bunch of stuff for papers that I've written, you know, um, over the, you know, years. <laughs> so, uh, this is like my library. All of them have a similar type file system in here, but and again, you're, you'll, decide how you wish to organize it. It's totally up to you. I probably need to take some time and reorganize things here a little bit. But it, what usually I do is I create a folder for my particular project. So we'll just call this one the, I'm writing a paper. Maybe I put the class name in there. Maybe I put the week. I don't know. As you can see, I do a lot of week stuff in here, but I'm going to put, we'll just call it balance scorecard. You know, B A L N C. S-C-O-R-E-C-A-R-D, right? Balance scorecard. 
So there is my file. I like to have that file. That helps me organize what I'm doing for a particular paper. Imagine if you're doing like a dissertation or a larger paper, then you can kind of integrate all of these individual files as you're, as you're doing that. So, um, but for most of the work that you're doing at either baccalaureate or graduate level, they tend to be somewhat isolated works. You know, you're maybe working on a project, one paper over a period of time. I think the folder system might work well for you. All right, so I've got this folder, right? I got nothing in it, but I found that great article. Remember that PDF that I have that you can't see off my desktop? So now I'm going to take it. Oh, here it comes. I'm dragging it over. Ba-dunk. Well, look at that. It's recognized it for me. It's recognized the authors, the title, the year of publication, all for me. Okay? Done. Now I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to grab a couple of more and so we can kind of build out our, our, our references as we're kind of going through this. Okay, I paused the video. I've grabbed a few more. I found a few more interesting articles, kind of at random here, but I found a few more interesting articles that I'm using for my theoretical paper here that I'm, I'm writing for you guys. So, and again, you can't see them. They're on my desk. They're just simply PDFs sitting on my desktop. All right, let's bring up Mendeley and let's drag them in here. Here's one that I found. Oh, this is a great one. I got to have that one. Oh, look at that. But ink automatically grab the information for me off of there. And it's all going into this balance scorecard uh, file that I'm doing. Here's another one that was really great. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Okay. If that doesn't blow you away, I, <laughs> I don't know what will. All right. So there's a, there's three uh, articles that I have found by going to the library. Here's one of them. Again, just using our Mercy College library. Found this, this source here. Okay. Uh, and, a, and the other one. Now, there are some occasions, this is again where you need to play with it. You need to, there is a learning curve for any one of these things that you're using. Okay. There's going to be a learning curve. I trust me, it is worth the learning curve. Okay. Everyone's going to have its own little finicky nuances and you're going to be, you know, why didn't that citation load? Why is that not in there? And eventually you'll figure out a little trick or work around to, to, to make it work. But the time saved and the improvement of your writing, is definitely worth it in my opinion. Okay, so let me show you something else that can happen um, quite frequently with, uh, with all of these citation uh, tools. So let's say I'm at this one, okay? This balanced scorecard effective management tool, interesting. Um, but there is no uh, full text. I don't have that PDF full, full text. When I see this, I I love it. It's easy for me. I'm golden. Okay. But let's say um, I'm going here. I don't have the full text citation. Um, I'm able to, um, you know, maybe I'm able to find this particular article on the internet or whatnot somewhere else. Okay. In some other format other than maybe a, a very friendly PDF. Okay. But long story short, I don't have the PDF. What can I do? to get the citation in there because you saw me drag and drop the citation in there. There's a great feature that many of these things have, this reference, manage, reference management software, and that is the export feature. Okay, again, you just got to play with it. You think, oh, it's site. No, you really want export. Okay, so you hit export. And then what it does is you're going to want to uh, save citations to a file for formatting. And look, it even lists some of the ones that we've talked about. I happen to know the most standard format is the RIS format. So I'm going to hit save. And it downloads this little tiny file. Okay. I'm going to drag this off onto my desktop here. You guys won't be able to see it. And we're going to go back to Mendeley and I'm going to drag that into Mendeley. All right, just to show you what this, this little guy looks like, little file, just like that, sitting on my desktop. Okay, I'm going to drag it off just so I can bring up, bring Mendeley back into the picture here. All right, I'll scoot this down just a tad. So all I do is drag that file right into here. Let's see if the magic happens. I hope it does. 
There it goes. Beautiful. Now I may have to play with the all caps on there. Um, I noticed that sometimes happens, but I can live with that. I can live with that. So notice that, uh, that this little icon shows that I don't have the PDF. What's kind of cool is that let's say I do find the PDF at some other location. Not going to ask where. <laughs> well, let's say you do find the PDF for that article. You can uh, connect, connect it together. You can drag the PDF simply. You just simply drag that PDF right to this location right here. It will attach it to that area. Okay. That's very powerful and having all of these PDFs within your own library now that you can search. Um, you know, and I can do this literature. I can do this literature, literature search. I can also use this search bar up here to search within these, uh, these readings I've selected for information. Very powerful, uh, in, in my opinion. All right. So we've, we've got our, um, our references and now we're going to start writing our paper. So let's, uh, let's bring up a paper and you're going to have to bear with me here as we kind of move, uh, through these, uh, various windows. I personally like, I write on, um, two screens. So I got two screens going here. All right. So let's say I've got a paper. I'm writing along, blah, 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 blah. I'm writing. And I got to this point, you know, at it's, let's say right here, um, widely used within finance, manufacturing, uh, balance scorecards are slowly being adopted to healthcare organizations. Okay. So let's say I want to cite that particular information there. All right. What, what do I do? Well, in this particular software, man, I'm using Mendeley, you've got these within Word, you've got home and, you know, all these tabs and, and areas that you're probably used to, but there's a reference one. I've downloaded the integrated component that goes into Word and all my, like my little mini uh, Mendeley dashboard is right here. So let's say it's time to insert a citation. I simply go to insert citation. It'll ask me, you know, I want to go to the, yes, I want to go to the Mendeley library. Um, I could flip around to any one of these and let's say it was this particular reference, this article here that I need to cite. Hit the magic uh, cite button. Hold on. And hit the magic cite button here. Sorry, go to Mendeley. Are the details correct? So this is where I might double check, maybe fix these all caps. I'm going to say the details are correct and I'm going to hit the cite button. Boom. Look at that. Drop the citation in there for me. Okay. You can see it, you know, right there. It also tracks, you know, as we're going along, it will track the use of that citation, which is very cool. So let's say I'm going, let's drop, let's drop a couple of them in here. I'm writing blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's put another uh, citation or something. I said, uh, well, let's, let's pick another part. Um, this is just again for illustration purposes only. Uh, so let's say I'm gonna, I need to put a citation right here. Okay. So I'm going to hit my uh, insert citation button go to my library Again, each one's going to have a little bit different integration. Maybe it's this particular article now when it's site, boom, dropped it in there for me. Isn't that lovely? Uh, let's drop another one in. I'm writing going on, da, 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 insert citations, go to library. Now I want to use this source site. Boom. Drop that in there for me. Now that one, we do need to, it looks like it needs to, fix that one up a little bit and how that uh, dropped in. So I am going to go back and, and check that one. Well, let's drop another citation in. I'll drop a citation in, insert citation, go to Mendeley. I'll drop that one in, we'll cite that, boom. So that is really great. Okay. That you're able to do that as you go through the paper. Again, there might be some minor adjustments that you need to make. 
whenever you upload uh, a PDF or a document, it will always ask you if the if the information is correct. I you know double check it like that in the one case of the all caps. Um, let's just drop that one in for the heck of it. That one I would need to go in and fix. This may be particular to Mendeley. I don't know. Let's say I need to cite that one. Yeah, so I would, you know, I would fix that. Wouldn't be too difficult. Um, I might even be able to fix that on the fly here. Uh, yeah, probably going to need to go in there a little bit and fix that. It's not taking it. I can do all lowercase. Now we'll just try that. Capitalize. Um, each word. There you go. All right. So I might have to do that for each individual author um, in in Mendeley for that. But once, if I were to correct that once I uploaded it, I would not have to be doing that as I go along. All right. So let's say I've done, I've written my paper. I've got all my citations in here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, greatest paper in the world. Now it comes time to drop my references in here. So again, I go back to References, Insert Bibliography. Boom. Bibliography has been inserted. You may even, you even have the hanging indent. I'm able to ch change the style of that. If you know, according, we're using APA here, automatically inserts that. If you're doing, you know, if your instructor requires double space or, or whatever, you can adjust that. I, I do that all the time. The particular school that I go to, they like it single space with a space in between. Don't know why they want it, but that's what they want. I'm going to show you another quick trick here too. So notice how, um, let me just click off of that, how this is really wonky where it says retrieved from and you got all of this on here. Uh, you can fix that to make it a little prettier. It's a little bit of a art rather than a science, but if you stick your cursor in where you think you'd like to break it, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess right about there, and you do a shift enter, it can kind of make that a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, yet still be uh, true. I probably could have gone a little bit further before I did my shift enter and probably got another few more characters in there. But I think that's good enough. I don't think that's, that's good enough. Makes it look not so, it's not so weird. All right, so that's using Mendeley um, as you're writing, as you're finding sources and dropping them into your document. Let me show you another feature here that I think is really critical, uh, and that's the, being able to search within that collected file. Now, obviously, like this particular article that I showed you that we had to do kind of a weird thing with the, the citation to get it in there because we couldn't find the PDF. This, that, that weird citation part where that's all caps, that may as well be resolved if we found the actual real PDF and dragged it in here. PDFs are the gold standard, uh, I find, for reference management software. One, you actually have a physical thing that you can look at and search, uh, and it always seems to produce spot-on uh, citations in here. So, uh, but let's take a look at how I search. Let's say I wanted to look up um, balanced scorecard design. I read something in these three articles that I have actual PDFs. It's not going to be able to search the thing that I don't have a PDF for. But let's see if it finds anything. So balance scorecard design. And, uh, there it is. There's that stuff I need right there. Um, balance scorecard design. I can go here. Now I can go to the article. I can find, um, you know, where that is within the article on balanced scorecard design. It is, it's pretty, pretty cool stuff right there using the search feature within the article. Uh, I can dig down even further. That is a game changer for me because you collect so much stuff and then being able to find them, uh, it can be very, uh, very, very difficult. But the search function, I think, is critical. Not all of the, the big four that I showed you before uh, have that search function. So there you go. That is just a brief introduction on reference management software. I highly encourage that you folks uh, take a look at uh, what it can do for you. Take a look at that article, check out RefWorks, check out Zotero, 
Um, that's the open source free one. Mendeley is also uh, free as well. If you need up, like if you need a gazillion gigs of space on the web, it does cost some money. But for most folks, you don't need that much. Um, you know, uh, if you really are really going to delve into, uh, if you want the Cadillac, uh, you know, EndNote is pretty much considered the academic Cadillac of uh, reference management software. But please, I highly recommend take a look at these things, find one, get up on the learning curve on it, which isn't too terribly hard. Great, great videos out there that can show you the basics that I've just kind of showed you that I did, you know, putting it into the library, searching a library, dropping a reference in, a citation in when you need it, and creating uh, a reference page. Those are the biggies that you need to do. And those are the ones that just, just are huge time uh, commitments if you're doing them manually. All right, guys, hope this has helped. And please make sure you check out some of our other toolkit videos to help you work smarter rather than harder.